And we're back in the yard. Uh, so basically we got a three head mini split here. It's a Lennox. I got an F5, which is an outdoor fan speed error. So here I am at the outdoor fan. So let's see what's going on. So here we go. All right, so when I got here, I noticed the top one was spinning, but the bottom one isn't. So um, let's go ahead and see if we can spin it. Maybe there's something stuck in there. All right, so we got her opened up, and first thing I noticed is this is broken. And if you notice that, it's rubbing up on here. And that's because this is all loose. So check that out. Look at that, the bracket broke. So yeah, and so since that bracket cracked, the thing that holds it in place is snapped off. That's crazy, I've never seen that crack. Look at that. So luckily this unit's actually still under warranty. Um, so we're going to go ahead and order a new fan bracket or mounting plate. I don't know. It looks like it's all one piece. So I'll probably have to change out both. So we're going to go ahead and do that. All right. So I'm back. It's been a few days later. Uh, I got the warranty all claimed. Uh, so we're going to be changing. Uh, so you're probably asking yourself, why are you recovering this if you're just changing a mounting bracket? Well, apparently that mounting bracket, uh, is not a repair item. We can't order one. I've contacted Linux. I talked to, um, you know, the parts house. They told me to call tech support, talk to them, talk to customer service. I ended up talking to the regional manager and apparently this has happened before where that's cracked. And um, they ended up replacing the whole unit. So guess what I have in the big old, in the back of my truck right now, a brand new unit. Uh, so yeah, they sent us a completely brand new unit, no extra charge, completely under warranty. So apparently Medea makes this for Lennox and they've uh, discontinued that partnership. So now all the new Lennox mini splits are gonna be Samsung's with the Lennox sticker on them. But anyway, yeah, so thankfully they only had, to, they had 20 of these left. So I was able to get it pretty quick. So it's only been like a few days, but yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. I got to change the entire outdoor unit because of that. I'm like, serious? So yeah, it sucks for the client because he's got to pay for all this labor, but um, and you're probably asking, well, why didn't I just take it out of the uh, old one or out of the new one? Well, if I do that, then it voids the warrant. Yeah, it's a warranty thing. They said that I have to use the unit. So yeah, anyway. So yeah, so she's still recovering. This thing holds about 10 pounds, I believe. Uh, it's like 162 ounces. So that's uh, math right there. Uh, yeah, here's my new unit. Can you believe that? It sent me a completely brand new unit. All because that stupid plate in the back cracked. So I wonder if this one will crack too. And the sad thing is, is the warranty doesn't reset with this one. It basically just continues off where that one left off. So it's kind of, kind of lame. Anyway, while I'm waiting for this, I'm going to be disconnecting all the electrical. That's very important. You make note of which wires go where. Uh, so I've labeled them and I will do the same for my line sets. I got the old one out of the way, fixing to put this new one in place. And yes, I've moved these things all by myself and took it off the truck. Uh, I've been doing some strength training late, lately on uh, my Apple Fitness Plus, and uh, it's been working. Here's the thing about these multi-port heads. Um, sometimes you have to actually pull a vacuum on every single port individually, which totally sucks. Now this one, I don't think that's the case. Basically, we keep this closed because this is this is isolating the condenser, so all the refrigerant is stored in here. So we keep that closed. When we pull a vacuum, it's going to pull through here. Keep in mind, there is a pipe behind here which is going straight back. That's connected to the condensing unit. This is connected right here to a manifold which feeds all these. So all we need to do is open up the ports that we're going to be using, and it'll pull a vacuum on all three ports. Now the downside is we only have one port here, so it's going to freaking take forever. So that's why we got the 10 CFM vacuum pump here today. Now, normally I would cut these off and re, re flare them, but uh, these flares are actually pretty good. So I think I'm going to reuse them. Uh, I'm not seeing any burring or anything. They did a clean job. So I'm going to reuse them. So we got all of our adapters put on there. Now we need to torque these down. So this one's going to be the 5 8 and that's going to be a half inch. 56 Newton meters for the half inch and 65 newton meters for the five eighths. We got my Navic torque wrench here. I've been using this now for quite a while and I love it. Now you want to have a good arc on this. Get some nylon on there. You can 
see here, I'm putting it on the face, like right here, not on the threads, because that's where the sealing point is. Sure. So we got everything all torqued up. So now we're gonna go ahead and pressure test this with nitrogen. So we'll let our nitrogen in here. Now we do have to open these up. That way, it'll, you know, it'll go in there. Uh, we're gonna leave these closed because we're not using them. All right, so we got all our valves open. Uh, when you open up this, this one here, uh, a little bit of pressure will be in there. I think they put a little bit of nitrogen in there. Uh, so don't freak out, it's not refrigerant. Just do not open these until you're ready to put refrigerant. These are the ones that separate the refrigerant from the line set. So anyway, now we got that done, we're gonna hook up our nitrogen here and we will pressurize all three lines and see if she holds. Okay, so we're at uh, 244.7. So we'll wait about 30 minutes and come back. We are at, I'll focus, 244.6. And it's been about 30 minutes. So I would say that's good. All right, so I've been pulling a vacuum now for about like 15 minutes already at 6.30. Uh, yeah, this new one's pretty nice. We're gonna clean up some stuff. I'm gonna go lunch and I'll come back and it should probably be, it'll probably be more than done by the time I get back. All right, so we're back from lunch. So we're about 380 microns. Um, so we're gonna keep letting her run. I'm gonna do the electrical and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit these knockouts. I want the half inches. Uh, so that's gonna be A, B, and C. So I wanna knock out these two and that one. And then I'm gonna have my line voltage going in there. And that's just because they're all half inch uh, plugs. So I'm gonna leave this panel on because then, you know, it, it has something to push up against. Otherwise this thing will just be slapping all over the place and that's just gonna not be fun. So we'll go ahead and get that going. All right, we got all our knockouts knocked out. So, and you can see it's already kind of bent a little bit because it's from knocking it out. So if I tried to do it with this off and see it would just bend and not knock out, so. That's why you want to just leave the panel in there. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get this all connected. And one thing I'm going to add is I'm going to add terminals to the uh, to all the wires since they're stranded. I know it's it's something that Daikin calls for. I don't know if Linux does, but it's just kind of a habit I've gotten into. Why not? Well, these Klein wrenches are great for these things. I was eager to get them nice and nice and snug. All right, so we got our electrical done, and we're at 374. And we're using our 3 sixteenths, I think, right? Yeah, 3 sixteenths. Start with this little one here. So this is gonna be releasing the refrigerant into the lines. We are ready to power her up. All right, so we got our Schrader core. We're gonna pop that back on there. Give it a quick screw dot all the way. We want to bleed. Because there is a little bit of air in this guy. So we wanna make sure we don't do that, so. Uh, we push that down, we just screw it in. Don't over tighten it. If you break that, you're in a lot of trouble. Close that. A little bit will squirt out. And a little bit will squirt out. And we are good. It is sealed. Yep. Sweet. What do you guys think of my new uh, evacuation setup? I got the uh, the Vito um, hose hauler. I'm, I'm freaking loving this because it's, well, for one, the zippers all broke on my old Appian thing. And this one's a lot smaller, so it fits better and I can fit all my stuff in it. And it's just super organized, I love it. And then I love the fact that you have this little pouch in the center to put your wire card gauge in and it's like Velcroed to it. See, so I got my old one here as a backup and I have my primary here. And then one thing that I like to do is I have plugs for everything, you know, for my hoses. That way stuff doesn't get inside. And also, if there's any oil or whatnot, it doesn't leak all up in my bag. But yeah, I'm really liking this. This is also on my Amazon store, so if you want to support the channel, pick one up, because they're awesome. And they're not like super crazy expensive like some of Vito's products. Anyway, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and put all the panels back on, and then we're gonna power this thing up, and hopefully she works. Okay, so she's running. Both fans are. So let's go on the inside and see what's going on with that. Alrighty, so she is working. Uh, let's see. All right, so we got this one here, and it is about 98 degrees. Alrighty, so all three of them are working now. So I couldn't show the last one because there's somebody working in there. But uh, yeah, so if you ever come across an F5, uh, B5, 
be prepared. And if it's, especially if it's under warranty, you're gonna have to get a whole new unit. If it's not under warranty, you're gonna have to sell them a new one, which is really messed up. Anyway, hopefully this helps you out if you come across this situation on these Lennox, uh, AKA Medeas. So uh, thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Comment to me with a horrible technician name. <laughs> Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram, Facebook. And if you want to support the channel, pick up some tools from my tool store uh, or get some work socks. Thanks for watching.